Hello, 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 hello. How are you? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, of course, depending on where you are watching us from. My name is Freddie Mashate, and I am your host. Um, welcome to the virtual festival. It is a virtual festival that is presented to you by SciFest Africa in collaboration with the SAAO, South Africa's Astronomical Observatory. Of course, if you've been following by now, you would know that the SAAO turned 200 years of existence as an astronomical observatory this week. And it is this major milestone that has fostered this collaboration between Southwest Africa and the SAAO. This afternoon, we're going to be looking at astrotourism. When I got that notification, I looked it up. Astrotourism is defined as tourism using natural resources of unpolluted night skies and appropriate scientific knowledge for astronomical, cultural, and environmental activities. Speaking about the unpolluted night sky, our very own Sunderland Visitor Center has seen approximately 14,000 local and international visitors in 2019. The presentation links experiences and observations of how science and tourism have assisted to drive various developments in the Northern Cape. To take us through this presentation is Mr. Anthony Mietas. He is from the small community of Sutherland in the Northern Cape, currently employed by the SAAO as manager for the Salt Collateral Benefit Program in Sutherland, focusing on education, public awareness, and outreach. His work experience over the years ranges from local government to private sector development and currently education and outreach within the National Research Facility. As he is going to be going through his presentation, you that are watching us from Zoom are free to interact with us through sending your questions and comments via the Q&A function on Zoom. If you are, of course, watching us from Facebook, please use the comments section. We will be monitoring that and your questions or comments will also be brought to the fore. Mr. Anthony, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. The floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Freddie, for that beautiful introduction. Um, it's indeed much appreciated. Um, I am from the small community of Sutherland in the Northern Cape. Um, so I feel so honored to be on your platform today and deal with you the excitement of what tourism was all about in Sutherland for a destination that was never before seen as this, as this tourism hub. Uh, good, good afternoon to everybody that's listening in and thank you for taking the time and joining us in this conversation. It's indeed a very humbling and privileged experience for us this, this week because of the celebrations of the 200 years that we are experiencing now. Um, without further ado, I'd like to go straight into my presentation. Um, and indeed, Um, and indeed, um, as indicated to you by, by Freddie, I'm Anthony Mitas. I'm at the South African Astronomical Observatory. Now the portfolio is based around three very strategic pillars in terms of public awareness, um, educational development, outreach activities, but also a big component of what we are all about for the South African Astronomical Observatory is looking at the socioeconomic impact in the community where we are situated. Now, for those of you who are joining us for the first time geographically, we've got two offices, one in the Western Cape and one in the Northern Cape. The one in the, North, in the Western Cape is historically the old headquarters for the South African Astronomical Observatory. And we still use it today, but because of light pollutions and other variable impacts, uh, we can't use and have telescopes that are operational in, in Cape Town. So the, the observatory moved the telescopes, the observing telescopes to Sutherland in 1972, uh, which is quite a number of years ago. And it's at those telescopes in Sutherland where I am based. My talk to you today, I'll, I'll give you a quick introduction to the Northern Cape. The Northern Cape is host to this hub of astronomy development and excitement. And then I, have, I will filter down into because of the vastness and the geographical spread of the Northern Cape, we had to develop some 
regions um, to make it easier to package for our visitors and people that might come to the Nordic to experience that. I'll tell you a little bit about that. And then I'll give you an outline within these different regions of a little bit of routes that we have developed in each one of them. But my talk specifically uh, will be will be zooming into the Karoo Highland route, which focuses around Sutherland. And for that purposes, I'll give you some historical context. I'll give you the product offerings that we have. Uh, you know, it was quite a long road for us. Uh, it hasn't come easy. So I'll talk about that. I talk about the educational, the culture, the hospitality adventure. And of, of late, the impact of COVID um, and that what that had on the tourism industry. And then I want to play you a video for the that shows the possibilities and the investment opportunities in the Northern Cape. And I'll conclude my conversation with um, what it is that the future holds um, and highlight that for you. Um, so colleagues, thank you very much again. Um, I will now stop my sharing of my screen and then we will go straight into the introduction and welcoming video for you guys. Thank you. Listen with an open mind. See the images within. Hear the heartbeat of expectation. Feel the pulse of momentum. Close your eyes. So we can begin. Out of the dust, in the heart of the North, born from an idea, the power starts to grow. The sky is hungry. The mountains stretch towards the sun. From an idea, a civilization is born. The earth is crammed full of heaven. The world of reality has its limits. The world of imagination is boundless. Everybody has a dream. Dreams connect us in an unseen matrix. Dreams are the flow. They are the ebb. They are the weavers. They are the web. Nothing is impossible in this landscape. It hears your thoughts. It knows of the life you'd like to live. Imagine. The energy manifests out of the desert heat. The falling stars, like flowing tears, the diamond-studded layers underfoot. An ancient tribe meanders through infinite open spaces under the star cloth and over the red sands. The stains of memories color the caves. A story is being told not to be forgotten. Not to be forgotten. There is a genetic wisdom, old and listening, to be found in the wells of your spirit. You feel this past, pulsing under your feet, resting on diamond-dusted fissures. It's beckoning you to return to the source, to the place where it all began. Where it all began. To the precipice of a new journey that starts today with you in the north. As the sky god Tsui Goab brings renewal, life, light and rain. We go to a better life. Imagine. Thank you for that for that video um, and the introduction. I hope you you get the energy, the sense of the Northern Cape, the welcoming atmosphere, the humbleness by nature, the harmony between between human and nature. And I'm looking forward to hosting you in the Northern Cape. So in the Northern Cape, because of the geographical spread, we've got five very distinct different regions in our province. So first you have the Kalahari region, which is, which is the, the Kuruman area. Then you have the Karoo region, which is the DR area. And in this Karoo region is, is where Sutherland basically falls as well as part of the Karoo region. 
Then you have the green Kalahari region uh, for, for the Uppington area and those surrounding towns. And then you have the Damakwa region, um, central to Springbok and the flowering that's happening there. Um, and the coastal route on that side as well. And then the diamond field region, which includes Kimberley and that surrounding areas. Now, to package our, our offerings and our products in the province, it was very important that we develop these routes. And on these routes, we can now offer these different products um, and services. So you'll find in the Kalahari, there's a Kalahari route that you can travel. There's a Karoo Highlands route in Sutherland and, and Carnarvon and Fraserburg and those smaller towns. A Kokerboom route in the Springbok area and a Makwa coastal route, which includes the, the, the Port Nolith area and those, those surroundings there. And then the beautiful Richtersfeld with its world heritage as well. Now, for this little town of Sutherland, it's important that I give you some historical context to this. Because like so many small communities, Sutherland was never known to be a tourism destination at all. Sutherland was founded back in 1855 by a reverend called uh, Dumini Henry Sutherland. The South African Astronomical Observatory has put up the first telescope in Sutherland in 1972. However, apart from those um, two activities, there was not much that was really happening. The main, the main sector that employed people in the, in the local community was the agricultural sector, and that was predominantly sheep farming. But with the excitement in the news that came in 2000 in the commissioning of salt, um, when government said that they will partner with six other countries to put up this magnificent instrument called SALT, the Southern African largest telescope. Um, with the mirror segments of 91, it's spread over 10 meters in diameter. They said there must be tangible benefits to society. And those benefits comes in various forms and others, you know, it can be technological, it can be in terms of scientific output that we use the instrument. But what about the ordinary man? How how can we accommodate his dreams as well? And I know because I grew up in Sutherland. Prior to 2000, there used to be no connection, no interaction, and no activities in the local community from the South African Astronomical Observatory in the town itself. So I was quite fortunate in 2001, when we started the conversation after this commissioning of SALT about the potential of tourism I was still in local government. And I can still remember that people in this little community was very pessimistic. Uh, people didn't think in their wildest imagination that visitors will drive all the way to Sutherland to come and experience what we have to offer there. We signed a partnership between ourselves, the Northern Cape Department of Tourism, uh, as local government back then, and the South African Astronomical Observatory to open our first tourism office to try and track and keep a record of how many people actually uh, come to Sutherland um, on a monthly basis. And we made it in such a manner that the, that the bookings that you have to do to go and visit the observatory had to come through this little tourism office in order for us to be able to keep record of that. And I can still recall, we opened that in September of 2001. At the end of September, we received about 18 people that were interested in visiting the observatory. Also bearing in mind, my dear friends, that the observatory only opened its doors after 2000 for general public members. And we were excited about the 18. So as part of the local economic development strategy within the municipality, we embarked on a assessment on a research survey to see but what could potentially be the number that people or number, number of people interested in coming to Sutherland. And I can recall that that 
By that time, the assessment came out to between 14,000 and 18,000 visitors per year. And we thought, wow, if that can only materialize, if that can only happen. But as this road in this picture indicated, it took some hard work and it was really a long, long road for, for us. Nevertheless, we kept the enthusiasm, we kept on working with our partners and we embarked on this journey since 2001. And today we can proudly look back and I can speak to you on the following things. At the South African Astronomical Observatory, we focus mainly around the educational component, the public awareness component. Remember the number in September 2001? We influence national curriculum and therefore it became part of the curriculum of our schools from grade seven in a theme called Earth and Beyond, where astronomy is a big component and a big part. And as a result of this exposure, we started to get more interest and started to partner with the National Department of Education in exposing our learners. So a big component of our program in Sutherland that brings in learners from various schools and various backgrounds to come and experience what they are taught in their classroom environment about astronomy and the instruments for optical astronomy that we use in South Africa. But also, with the learners, there's the teachers. So we partner and apart from us doing workshops away from our facility in Sutherland, we also experience that teachers want to actually come and visit the real thing. So on various occasions, we've partnered with different provincial department of education to bring their curriculum advisors and bring their teachers of the subject area to Sutherland for a program. And we conduct these programs for them. But our biggest interest comes from general public members domestically in South Africa. After the media exposure with the commissioning of SALT and the construction phase of SALT that took five years from 2000 up until 2005, and until President Mbeki in November of 2005 came to South Africa to ultimately tell the world that we have done with, we are done with the construction of salt, created a huge domestic interest in South Africa for people and families to travel to Sutherland. So much so that our busiest period at the moment is the winter school holiday the three week school holiday. During that three weeks, we nearly get about 2,000, 2,500 people visiting our facility in Sutherland. December holidays, where we nearly get 2,000 to 3,000 people visiting our facility in Sutherland. General members of our public just interested in astronomy and the beautiful inspiration behind astronomy. This has grown so much that it has provided for opportunities for local community members to do private stargazing sessions as well, where we empower people because the demand is of such a nature that the SAO can't handle all people that wants to visit in the evening at the, at the facility. So it's created the opportunity for a local amateur astronomer who's passionate about astronomy as well, and who's got his interest from his engagement and activities at the SAO, to now create a viable and sustainable business for himself. It has also led to a digital planetarium being, being put up by a private investor in Sutherland. Wow. Never in our wildest imagination could we have envisaged 
that that would happen in this small community of Sutherland. It has become a viable employment option apart from the agricultural sector. With over 350 direct job opportunities being created, indirectly supporting more than 700 families. Now in the context of Sutherland, who's a very small town, that is significant because we only including our, uh, our district, it, in, it, it's about 5,000 people or 5,000 inhabitants in this small community. It has also enabled us to invest in the youth and the young people to become fully trained guides. Wow. In our department, the guys that are offering these tours are local community members from Sutherland who the observatory took the initiative and invested resources in to be able to conduct this guidance tour confidently about the area. But with all the other tourism activities coming up as well, it is now that SAO and SALT has become only one activity within a broader range of activities and product offerings in the small community. Now your question might be, if you are interested in visiting our facility, what do we do specifically? For the general public, we offer tours from Monday up until a Saturday, twice a day, 10.30 and 14.30. Every day, guided tours that you have to book online. You can go to our website, you can get the, the details there and you can make a booking immediately. Our stargazing sessions is on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And that's where you can experience the beauty of nature in its true reality. Sutherland is considered to be one of the darkest observatories in the world. And the best time to come and visit us is during the winter, winter season. But it's also important that we find it a way to create synergy between what we offer at the observatory and the community in this local, in, in Sutherland. And the thing that ties us all together is the heritage and the culture. Because it's here we have to acknowledge the indigenous people of our communities who had a relationship with the stars even before that preceded our time. It's here that we had to find a meaningful and effective way of, of linking what we have to offer and an interest in the local community. And we find that by speaking to the elders in the community. We got them together for what we called at the SAO, the Sutherland Reflections Project, where we got the elderly people of our communities together to share stories, to talk about their culture, to tell people why it is that they are still in these remote and rural parts of our country. And the eldest guy, Thomas Kluter, who passed on at the age of 106 years old. He used to stay in a place called the Old Lukasi in Sutherland. And the Old Lukasi came about because of the removals that happened in earlier years. But still, despite all that heartache, despite all those hardships, they were so conscious about living in harmony with nature, that he shared the story that when they grew up in that part of the world in Sutherland, and whenever they were seeing meteors or shooting stars as we know them, they were informed by their parents and grandparents that they had to run towards that, pick that up 
and throw it back into the night sky. So that resource could be reserved for generations to come. And this story was important for us because that made, made us do a link in our visitor center in Sutherland that encapsulate the spirit and the story that these guys were telling, Thomas specifically. So whenever you visit our visitor center, there'll be this, and you're on the guided tour, you'll see there's this exhibition made out of the broken glass pieces of the place he used to stay in the old Lukasi, of him throwing up a star into the night sky. But the beautiful thing about that, so with any of the visitors that come through our visitor center get to hear that story and immediately makes the link for people to go and visit this place called Old Lukasi in Sutherland to get the cultural and the heritage um, stories being told to them by the locals. But so we have gathered other stories as well. Story for our younger generation, especially for the foundation phase of our children in schools. So we can preserve these stories and use them as inspiration for these young kids. So the next video I would like to play you is of such a story that we captured and these short stories are now being used in the classroom environment to share with the little ones about whether it's the moon, whether it's the planet, or whether it's a particular star of interest. Moon's message. In the beginning, Moon lived on Earth with all the other beings. She was wise and respected by all. One day, she had an important message for man. But who could be her messenger? Chameleon was nearby, so she asked him to deliver the message. As I wither and renew, so will you too. So Chameleon set off to deliver this important message. As I wither and renew, so will you too. But Chameleon was slow, and Hare overheard him talking in the felt. What are you doing? I am delivering an important message from moon to man. You're too slow. I will do it. And before Chameleon could say anything further, Hare ran off with Moon's message. As I with that bring you, so will you too. Hare arrived where man lived and shouted, I have a very important message from Moon. Well, what is the message? I will wither and renew, but not you. <gasps> Giving no time for frightened man to reply, he dashed off back the way he came. What a fast and clever message I am. He hurried back to Moon. Moon, Moon, I delivered your important message. And what was the message? I will wither you but not you what you careless creature you have delivered the wrong message exclaimed moon as she swung at hair with her walking stick moon stick Ow. struck his top lip and it split open to this day he has a split upper lip to remind him to slow down and watch his words and moon now lives in the sky shining brightly providing a constant reminder of her message to all. As I wither and renew, so will you too. I really hope you enjoyed that. And that's just one example of, of capturing these stories, keeping them on record and using them as a resource. But with this demand and this flow of tourists coming to Sutherland, we now stand between 14 and 15,000 tourists annually. 
that comes through the South African Astronomical Observatory that we have a record of. That has created a viable, sustainable tourism industry in this small community. In September of 2001, when we started off, we had the tourism office and one little cottage providing accommodation. To share with you how this little community has embraced astronomy as this viable vehicle, we now have over 50 guest houses in Sutherland. Most of them have a theme around astronomy. Jupiter, Blue Moon, Southern Cross, Venus Sisters, to name a few. Because this has now become the economic hub in this little community that will sustain a sector for them. A good few years ago, September of 2001, when we were doing a survey of what resources we had, I can't even recall of one restaurant that we had in town. Today, we have multiple restaurants providing hospitality services. Cater for every visitor that visit our little town. But it was important over the years that we diversify our activities and our offerings. So as the years has grown, as we started to understand our growing markets, especially our domestic market, because that's our main feeders in this little town of Sutherland, with the Western Cape and Gauteng being the biggest feeding provinces, it was important that we offer activities that will ensure that families and visitors stay for longer than one day, that they spend more. Because every visitor that you get, every seven visitors that you get can create one job opportunity for another. So now we have people that are offering four by four drives in this community. We are people that are offering a horse riding as activities. And these things only strengthen the products and the offerings that we have. We have a very good relationship with a paleontological site in Fraserburg, Mr. Martinez van Skalkwijk, who was part of our development program as a tour guide and now has his own little business taking people on the paleontological site in Fraserburg who is over 250 million years old. It's so important because these diverse offerings that we had in the have in this community, in our experience, has really brought to the fore the creativity and the platform for people to express what the Northern Cape is all about, a real experience. I will play you now another video of what the future holds and what investment opportunities there are. Globally, it's becoming increasingly rare to find places of genuine new opportunity. Places to do business, explore partnerships, invest and find markets where you are welcomed with warm hospitality 
and the chance to share in the endless possibilities available in this spectacular landscape. As large as Germany and as economically diverse, the Northern Cape of South Africa is such a place. The discovery of diamonds in 1890 saw the globe flock to Kimberley and a world-leading industry was established. This global industrial event is now being repeated as international business leaders return to invest not just in diamonds, but in new industries and forces that are shaping the planet today. Thriving commercial and administrative hubs have grown around our established industries and are investing heavily in the region's diverse new economy. Schools around the province are focusing on a curriculum that will create a generation of young scientists, engineers, mathematicians and physicists. Universities like the new Sol Plaiki University in Kimberley are producing graduates with more practical experience. Top medical facilities are adding to the draw of these cities, making them more attractive to young professional families. This expanding skills base has access to a well-established engineering capacity, which services mining, agriculture and heavy-duty road transport. The Northern Cape has been granted 14 licenses from government for oil and gas exploration, which will boost marine engineering demand and capacity. To further develop the skills of the people of our province, government has invested in the building of the Kimberley Diamond and Jewellery Centre. Here, young artisans are given the opportunity to grow their skills and to get hands-on experience in the art of creating authentic and original jewellery. Students are taught how to cut and grind diamonds, harvest it from the region, and to prepare them for the growing demand for this much-loved gem. The training is ongoing and extensive and is fast making our province a diverse and skill-filled hub. Among the biggest market forces driving growth is mining, with iron and manganese exports as strong as ever. The export of steel to Europe and America has seen the development in additional support infrastructure. The Northern Cape prides itself with one of the best infrastructure in terms of road, uh, buildings, uh, to support the potential investor. Adding to the existing road and rail network is a new line to the west coast, where a deep water port is part of local government's 500 million US dollar investment in export facilities. The other vital resource and development driver is water, which flows abundantly through the province from South Africa's two major rivers. Together with the country's two largest dams, this water distribution has strong new management from both national and regional government, able to sustain commercial activity in a province of 360,000 square kilometers. The maintenance and expansion of water security allows for a formidable export agricultural industry. Our province is home to the largest wine-producing co-op in the Southern Hemisphere. The highly respected and multiple award-winning reputation of South African wine has translated in increased exports to the emerging markets like China and the East. Our region is also world-renowned for table grapes, raisins and brandy. Amongst the world's largest producer of pecan nuts, this agriculturally diverse region also supports a thriving date industry, with maize farming long being a foundation of local food production. A well-developed feed industry and water security drive extensive sheep farming in the southern Karoo. Supported by the Industrial Development Corporation of South Africa, the beef industry offers another healthy, expanding example of agricultural opportunity in the Northern Cape. There are various incentives that can be specially crafted for a potential investor. There's instances whereby some municipality will then offer tax and rates break for probably maybe 15 years. There's also other incentives if you have to then locate in a special economic zone like you get your 15% uh, corporate tax reduction, you know, uh, building tax allowance, employment and tax incentives. 
There's also then your custom controls earlier, which is vet exempt and duty free. And uh, your one to tax allowance designed to support uh, greenfield investments. Driving business growth is the largest solar platform in sub-Saharan Africa, harvesting and producing industrial energy by day and storing for domestic consumption by night. This solar energy platform is part of our commitment to the Paris Climate Agreement and allows solar innovation to be developed and expanded as far as the Sahara. South Africa is the largest producer of solar energy in Africa, with the Northern Cape leading the way. The development of the Square Kilometer Array, or SKA, the world's largest radio telescope, resulted in collaboration between world-leading scientists and engineers from 100 international organizations. Once functioning at optimum, it will require supercomputers faster than any in existence, as well as network technology that will generate more data traffic than the entire internet. Our growing tourism industry caters to the luxury traveler, those in search of adventure, to those who seek silence and space, underpinned by the will to preserve the ancestral sites of ancient cultures who navigated by the stars and lived in harmony with nature. Opportunities in hospitality and adventure tourism are limited only by your imagination. The mineral and marine-rich west coast between Cape Town and Namibia has become a much sought-after destination for photographic safaris. The Northern Cape also has very favorable incentives for any business or group who wish to make their next conference or gathering that much more memorable. With world-class facilities scattered across the province, we invite you to experience something truly unique. The semi-desert of the Tankwa Karoo hosts the annual Africa Burn, where people flock to from all around the world to build a temporary city of art, costume, and music. Adventures down the Orange River are a centerpiece of overland tours through Southern Africa. These tourism opportunities are supported by strong infrastructure and tax incentives. Taking advantage of both is a thriving film industry. The local currency makes our country a highly competitive place to film in, supported by a strong and highly professional industry. Conveniently situated between prominent film destinations, Namibia and the Western Cape, the Northern Cape has hosted movies from Lords of War, Funny Enough, Slagfeld, and Once Upon a Road Trip. All of this diverse and economically driven interest and investment flows through Kimberley and Uppington International Airport with daily flights to and from major centers around South Africa. Established infrastructure and logistics allow new ventures to utilize reliable supply routes to get product moving where needed to other markets. As it is across South Africa, the hospitality industry is professional and well-established without ever losing the unique charm of our province that attracts people here over other destinations. It is a broad, rich, generous and welcoming land. A canvas for you to paint your future today. With strong incentives and support from local government, this economy is looking forward, thriving, and finding partners across the globe. This is your invitation to join us and write your future. Concha, Elokoji, Sia, we are Concha. Colleagues, I hope you have enjoyed that. What does the future hold for astronomy?
Well, very excited. Three big things happening. The Department of Science and Innovation um, are busy putting a national strategy on astro-tourism together. It's the first that they are embarking on. Uh, we have our first engagement starting from next week. And I'm so looking forward to that. The Northern Cape uh, Provincial uh, Department of Economic Development and Tourism are involved. Northern Cape Tourism Agency are involved. And all other stakeholders from the different communities are involved in putting a strategy together that will bind optical and radio opportunities. It will provide the space for Sutherland to be linked with Carnarvon where the square kilometer ray telescopes are going to be put up and where we can then develop the necessary resources on this hub for astronomy. In 2022, the Sutherland observing site will be 50 years old um, and that will be a big event as well. Um, a celebration of what the contributions were over the years in 50 years. In 2024, the International Astronomical Union will have the General Assembly for Astronomy in South Africa. That has been described to me as like the Olympics of astronomy. So you will have people from all over the world coming to South Africa to have conferences and discussions on sciences but it will be the ideal opportunity for us to introduce these product offerings to the various stakeholders. And with that, colleagues, I'd like to thank you all again for joining me in this conversation and for allowing me the platform to share my story from Sutherland with you guys. I'll be looking forward to some questions. Thank you. Well, wow, thank you, thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Anthony. Um, the story was really inspiring, um, a story of how, you know, a community came together and embraced the idea of astrotourism and put together resources and whether that was just skills or whether that was financial resources to build a whole tourism destination. I think it is a powerful story and something that we should be celebrating. But I think as we are waiting, please do engage with us. Uh, those that are you know, with us here on Zoom, you can use the Q&A function. And if you're watch watching from Facebook, then you can use the comment section to engage with us. But um, a question to just kick uh, start the conversation. Uh, and I, I see we don't have much time. You know, the Northern Cape is, is the biggest uh, province in, in South Africa. And, and I just wanted to learn, where, are there you know, some challenges that are you know, associated with the province and, you know, how, how has astro-tourism started to address some of them, like some, some of them? Yeah, uh, thank you, Freddie. I think one of the still, the biggest challenge for us remain accessibility in the Northern Cape to the South African Astronomical Observatory. Because the roads that binds us basically with the Northern Cape is, is gravel roads. Um, mm. And they're quite far, far in between to travel. And it's difficult for learners, especially with buses or with, with heavy vehicles to travel those kind of roads. So we're hoping with this tourism strategy that comes along that those are one of the things that will be highlighted and probably be addressed. Because we see ourselves in Sutherland as sort of the, the entry port to the Northern Cape from the Western Cape side and from the, the Gauteng side as well. Um, so, so, so the idea is that if we can keep that visitor and send them further up in the Northern Cape, they can add more values to these little towns like Fraserburg, who's in the middle of Sutherland and Williston, mm. um, and in the middle of Sutherland and Carnarvon, um, to keep that visitor for spending more time in, in, in there. One of the other challenges we had is, is upskilling people because service providers are not randomly available. So we had to use different means of ways to, 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 you know, to empower the locals. And one of the ways that we ultimately find that works most suitably for us is, the, is a combination of the, the online facility to do tour guide training, for instance, but also the, the practical exposure. So, so we will normally take a, a, a young person in and we will put them on a volunteer basis. Um, and they will learn the necessary skills, presentation skills, the science behind everything that we are doing um, while participating in doing their, their skills program as well. 
So it mm. truly is a combination. Um, and then also for the hospitality side, one of the challenges was, you know, you, did, you didn't want to have a diverse marketing strategy. You wanted it to be as cohesive the message as possible. So after various options were tried out and people individually doing their own thing, in, eventually we are now into one platform that says that, that is Discover Sutherland. So all, all the activities, all the guest houses, you can find that there. Um, and, and it's all nice and neatly put together and it's maintained and well looked after. It's professional and there's people that can respond to inquiries. So, so those are some of the challenges and how we've overcome them over the, over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested, and this is just an interesting question, right? Um, so do we see a future, because there's a lot of talks right now um, where people are speaking about, you know, taking a flight to the moon and, and adding that as a bucket <laughs> list, something that you want to do before, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> Do, do we see that happening in the near future? Because I, I believe that astrotourism, as, as you were speaking, you made me, con you convinced me that astrotourism can actually be the next big thing. And I guess the real question is, is to say, what are some of the things that you guys are doing to make sure that we, we reach that big, big place? Yeah, so, so you know, it's, it's funny you would say that. Um, we got excited as we went along. You know, for, for observatories around the world, I think, for, for the SAO, it's, it's like we're at the forefront. Uh, this has been a benchmarking for ourselves. It's been a trial, test, and error exercise for us. We've made mistakes along the way. We're the first to acknowledge that. But certainly, we can see over the years, you know, how it has added value. So in dealings and having conversations with at ministerial level, with, with, with visits in high-level delegation, one of the big things, and that's why we're embarking with DSI and we're excited about this astro-tourism strategy, because the idea is that if we can package this neatly together and promote it accordingly as science tourism or astro-tourism, you know, it can become for South Africa one of the big product offerings at a national level, because the Northern Cape is this hub for astronomy. And as you know, with SKA coming, the interest is just going to keep on growing and growing and growing. But it's important that we empower the people in this, in this local communities to access those opportunities that might be coming from developing this massive product for astrotourism in the Northern Cape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just interested to know, you know, when we speak about the story, and it is an amazing story, I think I'm saying that for the second time, it's an amazing story. What, are, what, do, you, what do you find that uh, are things that communities can learn from the story of Sutherland? You know, I think it, the, the, the biggest lesson we, we have learned certainly over the years is, you know, it will be, it will very good to start off by doing a community profile, the skills, the interest, what are the offerings, what are the products that are available. And if there are skills needed to equip the, the, the people with the necessary skills, then it's important that we learn that we bring in the, and we leverage the support for, from the right stakeholders, whether that is financial support, whether it's human resources support, you know, whether it's mentoring support for for up and coming businessmen in this, in this environment. Um, because certainly when the opportunity arises, you want people to be ready to access that opportunity. And, and it's sad to say that because it was a trial test and here and we, we, we did not really expect that will expl explode the way it did explode over the, few, over the last few years. Um, there is a very limited amount of black guest house owners, for instance, you know, that had the means and the resources to take it advantage of the opportunity it presents. Um, but now, after we've seen this grown, we had the Minister Patel when he was still Minister for Economic Development there, his department there, and guys, the financing agencies are now working with the, with the people to set them up and get them in the market. 
um, to access these opportunities. But certainly if I can turn back and go back in a lesson learned, that will be one of the biggest lessons. Get the guys ready, get the interest, get the skills ready and bring in the stakeholders and the support and get a strong mentorship program and then access the opportunity. Mm, powerful, powerful. I, I think the one thing that, you know, um, I think I am learning from the story is, is, is that of collaboration. And I think you begin, you continue to uh, expand on that to say different stakeholders after doing your research to say, what does the community need to yeah. engage them? And, and the story itself, it's actually to say whatever skill, you know, you had to offer and whether that was just indigenous knowledge that you had, you could come to the fore and help build this, this new economy around tourism that you were trying to build. Um, have you seen that, I think when you started the conversation in the beginning, you did say that the community did not believe. Have you seen you know, a change in over the years, obviously since from 2001 uh, to 2019, is that is that change, or do we still have some that are a little bit skeptical? PTC. <laughs> I think it has definitely changed. Uh, you know, you now have every person that possibly can access an opportunity accessing that, whether it's catering, whether it's it's accommodation in the hospitality, whether it's horse riding, whether it's it's um, you know. Um, on the agricultural facility, a sheep, um, what saving the sheep, you know, people haven't been exposed to those kind of things. So certainly that has changed. But mm. the big thing is why we have realized we see this change is we call because in our offerings and in our conversation, we make we let, made an opportunity for every part of society in this small community to be part of the conversations. You remember I said the, the, the reflections guy, the elderly guys, it was important because in dealing with the different various interest groups in the community, they have different needs, they have different skills, they have different things that they can bring to the party. And you need to cater for all of that because then ultimately the community will embrace this idea, you know, and you just become one of the catalysts, you know, you're not the main mm. driver then ultimately people take ownership and they drive this thing and, and it becomes self-sustainable. It creates that energy uh, because everybody has been involved in embracing this idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as we just round up, as we get to, to, to the end of, of this uh, session, uh, I would like to know, you know, uh, we, we speak about youth, you know, getting them ready to actually take up jo jobs in that economy. And when we talk of skills development, what are some of the skills that you think that are important, especially uh, when it comes to astrotourism? And in the case, I think of Sutherland in particular. Uh, it, it varies, the, 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 the time varies, you know. Um, mm. Initially, what we, what, when we started off, we had the program of 10 unemployed youth members um, based at the tourism office, um, uh, doing what we called um, they were informal tour guides, basically. But what happened is our slogan in the Northern Cape is we want to give our visitor a real experience. And mm. we wanted to create the concept that salt is only one of the activities. So, mm. so the idea was that the visitor will then book his tour with an informal guide. The informal guide will get into the vehicle of the visitor and they start having a conversation where all the other stuff are being brought to the fore. How do you live in Sutherland? How do you survive the cold weather in Sutherland? Mm. What else is there to do in Sutherland? And we wanted to create that synergy between what we offer, what the, what the visitor will need, but ultimately bringing them together, you know? Mm. So, so it varies. That program took us quite a few years to get right as well. And then we systematically use those guys to, to upgrade them, upskill them. Some of them are now full employed by us. We are using them at the South African Astronomical Observatory. Others have chosen to start their own businesses and are now you know, self-sustained in, in doing their own guided tours all around the, the place. We, have, yeah. we had what we call the Kamamas coffee shop, looking at traditional cuisine, um, you know, so, so those are the kind of things that do take time. 
but but it varies. It varies. The last tour guide online course that we did was about four four weeks online that we did with them. But part of that and part of the going through the process is that they had to do an actual itinerary and they had to deliver that itinerary as part of their assessments. You know, as part of this celebrations, our intention in Sutherland is now for the young people to develop an energetic, adventurous itinerary that we can market for them. And then they can win a prize, a cash prize, either to start their own business or to invest in themselves. But part of that prize will be for that young person to also receive accredited training, um, you know. And so, so they are fully equipped to do their own thing as well and become self-sustainable. Okay, I have a question here from Jacqueline Stevens. She says that I saw the virtual tour of the sort yesterday. I was very impressed that you have gone so far as to include VR, VR headset in the tour. How long did this take you to put together? You know, I'm not quite sure about the actual, actual time, but it, 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 mm. it did take some time and it was part of the development for our new website that we that we got ready for this 200 year celebration. But the exact amount of time, I'm not too sure about that now. Yeah. Um, um, the history and the stories behind every part. So on our website, normally or not or normally, we have on our website what we call the African Star Law that shares these stories um, mm. that, that are referenced there that you can find on our website as well here. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I think on that note, time is, 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 is what has left us. Our one hour has come to an end. Uh, before I just sign off, do you just want to say any last words uh, encouraging no. people to come to Sutherland? Or... Please, please. I look forward to hosting people in Sutherland. Thank you very much, Freddie, for hosting me and having you on me on this platform. It's indeed such an honor for me as a Sutherlander, you know, to come and share this story because hopefully this story will inspire like astronomy other people mm. to start similar initiatives. Yeah, indeed, indeed. My hope is that other communities might be inspired and that we might see small Sutherlands popping up everywhere. Uh, I think you have a beautiful story to tell. It should be told and it is such platforms that you know afford that platform for you to, to share. Thank you very, very much to you, uh, Mr. Anthony, for coming onto the platform and honoring our invitation. Thank you to the SAAO as well. From myself, Freddie Mashate, Mr. Anthony, Surfest Africa, sign out. Bye. Thank you.